just letting you go first, right? Uh, correct. He was uh, very gracious. My name is Eric Previn, for the record, and I appreciate this body wants to get out the door, as do I. Um, I was very interested in item number 37 and the toxic contaminant um, item. And I was also, as you know, we spoke about the general public comment and the rules and such. And in October of 2016 at the County Board of Supervisors, uh, they had a very similar kind of situation which affected both of those issues. There was a, a disruption during a meeting um, about a proposed project in Mira Loma up in Lancaster to put a women's detention facility. And there was a lot of concern by members of the public because of uh, toxic contaminants in the soil. Uh, they have something called COXI, which is called valley fever. Some may know, you're a physician, some of you are physicians. It's a deadly uh, spore that when it contaminates women who are highly vulnerable and Filipinos and African Americans, a targeted population that doesn't do as well when it's exposed to this. But nonetheless, the room had been cleansed because one group made some noise and then they did sort of what you did last week, which was go into closed session uh, and then admit only the press. But in fact, there were no press uh, at your meeting, I guess. Um, it was a bummer because the people really had a lot to say and that project got pushed through. So it underscores how important it is to keep the rules fair and square and try to do your best. And I know you, you will uh, going forward, I certainly hope. And, and it's also important to understand that, and I'm going to spend the rest of my public comment talking about City Hall where I was there recently at a meeting and uh, a bunch of workers came down from the port where Mr. Buscaino uh, rules, and well, not rules, but you know has a big say in what happens, obviously. And these are the short haul workers. And you, some of you may have seen the USA Today uh, article. Uh, there was a, I think it was an opinion piece about how this group is unfairly shepherding a tremendous burden as we all strive for zero emission in the future. Because this is a group that barely gets minimum wage, quite frankly, and often come with their own rigs and try to deliver you know, what we all need to make Southern California work every single day uh, in terms of stuff and, you know, trans all, they transport everything. And yet the deal that's currently uh, in place has sort of the owners of the new equipment loaning it to the operators, which puts the operators in a pay to play. And yet then they show up for work at 6 a.m. One guy told me at the side at the city hall, he said, I'll show up at work for six, at 6 a.m. And then they'll say, sorry, we don't have any work. And this is a guy who's canceled his day, dropped his kids, or you know, with the. So it's a heartbreaker, quite frankly. And though we do all want zero emission, I know this is exactly the purview of this group. Uh, we have to find a way to make the end users across America underwrite that, not the local workers, because I'll tell you, it breaks it breaks my heart. And what's worse is, is that at City Hall, where Buscaino and Herb West and those guys are all doing a, a job. You know, they're re reducing public speakers to single minute, and they do it. There. It's even worse in committees where they say you can speak more fluidly. They reduce it to only two minutes on items, even if there's 30 items. So I would ask this body to think long and hard about including the public and also raise your voice about those local workers down in the port who need help. They do need help, and I appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you for your testimony. Mr. Weiss? 